Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum to all the Muslims that are watching this video. Welcome back to my blog. I know it's been a minute. I do apologize. I did promise to post once a week, but time has gotten the better of me. I've been so busy with different projects and with work and Ramadan and my business, uh, alhamdulillah. So yes, I do apologize and I do promise to inshallah from now on keep to my once a week post. As the title suggests, this video is about domestic violence and my experience with it. Um, I really have been umming and ahhing about posting this video because it is very close to home. Um, but, you know, anyone that's new to this blog or watching this video or seeing me for the first time, this video is not being made for the purpose to seek attention. I don't want sympathy. That's not the reason why I'm making this video. I am basically making this video to help every female worldwide that gets to watch this video, God willing, um, that is currently in a domestic violence relationship or has just come out of a domestic violence relationship. I'm here to show you that I am an example, along with many thousands and hundreds of other women around the world, that I've come out of domestic violence alive, healthy, and things have just been so much better. I mean, when you're in that situation, you just think like, this is as good as it's gonna get. And I'll touch base on that later on. But um, yeah, that's what this video is about. Um, as I said, I really hope that this video does help as many women as it can, um, or at least give them a bit of strength, a bit of courage, a bit of insight uh, for someone that was in a domestic violence relationship. I know that when you're in a domestic violence relationship, you don't really have a lot of connections with people in the outside world. Um, and I'll also go into that later on. So. Yeah, if you happen to come across this video or someone sends it to you and if I help at least one person get through this struggle, I feel blessed that I was given the opportunity. And um, yeah, anyone that has been in a domestic violence relationship, I would love to hear your feedback about this video. Um, if you feel I could have mentioned some points that I didn't, feel free to comment below because I don't know how many women are going to watch this video. It could be one, it could be thousands, it could be millions, it could just be a hundred. Um, but, you know, as much information as we can give to someone in that situation, the better. Um, so basically my journey starts with, I don't know, when I was, okay, it started when I was younger. When I was younger, I would always watch movies and I would always, you know, see women in TV shows or in real life or hear about it in the magazines that, um, you know, that they are in a domestic violence relationship, whether it's physically, verbally, mentally. Um, and I'd always just think that they were stupid, that they were dumb. Like, how could you be in that kind of relationship? Like, I like, are you not using your brain? Um, and that's just me having been ignorant. And of course, I was younger. Um, when I was 14, turning 15, as I mentioned in my body positivity video, uh, which is further below if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I met my first partner, who was my first partner prior to Hamza, my husband. And um, I won't name his name. Um, yeah, I don't want to shame. I don't want to shame him because um, I'm a lot better than that. And um, I'm not disrespectful. I basically, I'm just making this to educate people. So yeah, I will have to remind myself not to say that person's name because... Yeah, I don't want to blurt it out. Um, but basically, yeah, I met him, met my first partner. We'll just call him Bob. <laughs> I met Bob when I was 14, turning 15. And um, yeah, I have a really big heart. So when I like someone, I fall really hard. And I mean, yeah, it could just be because I was younger. But I know for a fact that's how I am. Like, if I love a friend, like, I love you till the end. Um, and same with, you know, if, if it's a family member or whatnot. Um, so basically, yeah, I met this person when I was 14, turning 15, so I was in year 10. Um, relationship was good at start, of course, you know, um, it's high school love, what can I say? Uh, but basically, the first time I experienced the domestic violence in the relationship, um, I was in the city with one of my friends uh, from school. Her name was Amy. So shout out to Amy if she sees this video. Um, yeah, so I was with my ex, with Bob, and we were in the city and there was a group of guys that were looking at me and then I looked back to see like what like what were they talking, like what were they saying about me? Because I think I knew a few of them. I can't remember, this was years ago. But anyways, I think I knew a few of them. So they were talking and I'm thinking like, what are they saying about me? So I simply just looked to kind of, you know, get the gist of it. 
and then it was just like you know oh what the f are you looking at um you know like oh you like them or blah 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 and it was like not even my type at all and this person and bob knew this and i was like no um i told him why i was looking like why i had looked and um yeah he just went like off his face and i basically was yeah he basically just started name calling me um and that time I was skinny, like I was talking about my body positivity video, I was small. And um, yeah, I can't remember what he was saying, but was just name calling me like crazy. And I never had, you know, been name called like that's as bad is worse than when I was bullied in school. It was just like that one minute, that one instance in like five, ten minutes, it was just, you know, crazy names. So I basically was like, just leave me alone, I need to like cool off. So I went to um, my friend Amy's shop. At that point, she was working at the shop called Gone Bazaar in the city. Um, so I went to go see her and basically tell her what happened because at that time we were like best friends. So I'm like, what do I do? Like, like this is crazy. And I was just crying and I told her what happened. And then um, I remember she was time for her lunch break. So we were walking in the city and we, we turned down a street and then Bob was there. And I was like, okay, he's obviously following me. So he comes up to me and he's like, oh, he's like, come here, I want to tell you something. And I was like, okay, well, like, what, what can you say? And he came up to me and grabbed my shoulders and this like kicked me in my shin. And I remember like, I tried to act cool because obviously it's a busy street. Everyone is walking down there. But my shin was just like so sore. Like I felt like I couldn't walk properly. Like I couldn't walk properly. And um, it was just bruised and it was just just so painful and she was there at that time and she was like listen like we need to go so then we walked off and obviously I was crying and I was a mess and you know I just thought like what is going on like I simply just looked at these group of guys I wasn't staring at them I wasn't checking them out I literally just looked and was like this trying to figure out what they were saying and this is how this is the reaction that I got so um I can't remember what happened then but obviously um I really don't remember what happened but I think maybe that night at some point um bob had messaged me and we kind of like you know i forgave him of course and you know kind of solved, solved things there um but then there was a few other instances you know from then where he would have been in a bad temper whether it had been you know work or um you know we had a disagreement or issues with his family because he had um you know some small um family issues at the time um, you know, with his sister and with his brother and whatnot. So, yeah, whenever he was angry, even if it had nothing to do with me, he would take it out of me. It would either be, you know, uh, a few times I was punched in my arm and I had bruises. And I remember when I took pictures because I wasn't going to go to the police, but I basically just, I don't know, I, why, I don't know why we do it, women in domestic violence. I basically just took pictures just so that I could, I think, to show him, like, what he had actually done. Um, and then I remember him just, you know, um, throwing my phone and deleting the pictures so that I couldn't show anyone even though he knew that I wouldn't and that I hadn't um, and yeah there was just other times where I was yeah again like kicking my thighs or punching my thighs or um, yeah you know punching my leg and um, my arm and whatnot and you know it was always like oh I'm sorry it'll never happen again and and unknowingly you kind of fall into that cycle where you have so much love for the person that you know, um, you think you they you think they will change. You think you can change them, and I started to believe that um, in this case. And yeah, from there, oh, where are we? That was when I was fourteen, fifteen. Basically, by the age of eighteen, when I was eighteen, we bought a house together, and um, from there it just got worse because we were living together, and you know he was working crazy overtime at work. Um, he was putting in so many hours and he was always stressed. He was always on edge. He started like taking out smoking and knowing that it affected my asthma. Um, there's a lot of other family drama. Um, yeah, it, it was really crazy. So, you know, we would tend to fight more because um, I'm like, you know, why taking anger out of me? Um, he started to become very controlling. He already was, but it just got a lot worse when we lived together to the point that it was like, I couldn't even, um, I couldn't even, like, go out with my friends shopping. That's what it came down to. Like, if a girlfriend called, who he would have met, who he knew, 
um, it'd be like, you know, oh, uh, like he has to come with me. Like, how can I tell my girlfriend um, I'm bringing my boyfriend too? Like, how stupid do I look? I look like, like, I look like an idiot. Um, you know, and yeah, I just got to the point that, um, <sighs> that I would finish work and I worked maybe about 15, 20 minutes away from my house, our house. And he would tire me. And if I go home like half an hour or 35 minutes, like, oh, who were you with? Who did you meet? Were you with some guy? Um, you know, all this crazy mess. And I remember that, you know, from the time I started dating him, looking back now, my my life basically just went. I lost my life. I lost my teenage years. Um, you know, I lost my adulthood, early adult years. I mean, you know, in Australia they say, you know, when you're 18, you're legal, so you can drink, you can go clubbing, you can do this, you can do that. That's the reason why I didn't do all of that because I wasn't allowed to by him. I wasn't allowed to um, go to house parties. I've never been to a house party that I can recall. Um, I wasn't allowed to go clubbing, um, even if I was with him because he was worried about guys looking at me and getting attention. Um, I wasn't allowed to do so much stuff um and, and then I was like at that point I was like okay you know what it's okay because you know I have you and, and I'm serious about you know being with you I want to you know eventually get married to you so I don't need to go clubbing I don't need to um to drink I don't need to go to parties like what's the point do you know what I mean um but yeah from there it got worse like I said I wasn't allowed to even go down to to the shop to the shop to go and get something if I was going to go and do grocery shopping I was timed I would literally put on a time like you'd be like okay you left so and so time like oh you know where's the receipt let me check the time on the receipt what time did you pay for everything it was mad crazy and um like i said from there the abuse got a lot worse um i was constantly daily getting put down it was basically like my high school life and my childhood um of uh verbal abuse all over again but multiplied by 10. so having just um recovered from you know, or recovering from having been, you know, teased in school in year 10 to just slowly starting to get over that, meeting my, uh, meeting Bob and all starting again, that vicious cycle. It was just like, you know, looking back now, I just think, what was I doing? There were so many signs, but I just had so much love for him that I thought, okay, he will change, you know, and he loves me, just trying to, you know, kind of guide me like just saying this now I feel like I sound so stupid but the thing is like I said unless you're actually in that relationship yourself you don't understand how that person can change your mindset the way you think um the way you do things the way you dress the way everything and that's why I say I used to dress a lot modest um prior to Hamza because when I was with my ex when I was with Bob I couldn't have any cleavage showing, I couldn't have any legs showing, it was like, you know, you need to dress modest, like, I don't want guys looking at you. I mean, I wasn't dressing slutty, so I didn't understand why he was so controlling about that. But I, again, I was like, okay, you know what, it's fine, you're mine, I'm yours, like, that. that's okay, that's fine. Um, the point that it got really bad was when I wasn't allowed to see my own family. Um, the story I'm sharing right now um, is a story that my family, own family don't even know about. My mum, she knows about um, my ex having hit me a couple of times. My dad, my whole family really don't even know this story. Um, the only people that really know this story is probably Hamza and, and a couple of friends. Um, but yeah i when i was basically not allowed to see my family that really cut me and i think my family kind of felt like i think they still think that you know um um sorry i think they kind of think that um i just shut them out because <clears throat> because i was with bob and that i didn't want to have anything to do with them but um that wasn't the case i wasn't allowed to see my family I wasn't allowed to associate with them. My grandparents, my mom, my dad, <coughs> anyone. Um, it was really hard. And then it was that I wasn't allowed to associate with my friends. And it got to a point that I had no one. And I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't know. 
I had no one. I didn't have this help. I didn't have anyone there that had gone through domestic violence to help me. I didn't have... I just couldn't talk to my family. I was just too embarrassed and too scared. And I didn't want to show them how much I had screwed up. Because this like, was my first time that I had really screwed up in my life. It was a really dumb decision. And um, I just felt so alone. I just felt so scared. I just hated myself. I was made to feel like that I was worthless. That I was nothing. Um, that this was my life. And then I had to deal with it. I had to accept it. And I felt numb. I felt like I didn't have the strength to get up and move. Or I felt like I was paralyzed. Like I couldn't move. I couldn't... I couldn't call anyone. I, I I didn't know what to do. I really didn't know what to do. I mean, obviously, yes, I prayed, but I didn't know what to do. I, I'm sorry. I promised myself I wouldn't cry making this video. Um, yeah, and I just want to apologize to any of my family that are watching this video, my friends, um, for having shut them out, shut everyone out, and. If you just knew what I'd gone through, <laughs> there's just, it was just too much, it was so much, you know, and then, like I said, not being able to speak to any of my friends, not being able to speak to any of my family members, I was only allowed to just have him, that was it, no one else, um, you know, it was even points that he didn't want me to see his own family, so it was just like, I'm um, just made to what go to work, come back home, have no social life, and just you know stay home and cook and clean for you like I'm a, some house slave. <sighs> um, from there it got you know a bit more worse. There was a few times that I had to go to hospital because I was, um, I was attacked quite a bit. Um. <sighs> I've had um, items stuck inside me, I've had um, things thrown at me, I've been put against the wall as a punching bag. I just don't want to think about, I just don't want to think about um, the injuries, but yeah, it was... Let's just say that there was a lot of times that, um, I'm just happy that I'm still alive. I'm just grateful to God that I'm still alive. And, um, if I stay any longer, I, I highly doubt I would, have, I would still be here today. All I can say is, is that if you are in a domestic violence relationship, if you think you might be in this, just please see the signs, see the signs, they will always be there, trust me. You will see from, you know, if this person just always just ticks off with anything and changes his personality, um, the abuse. I just, I just can't believe how I actually let this person overtake me and just, just change me. Um, like I said, if you see the signs or just anything, just talk to someone. Let someone know what's going on because I regret not doing that. I regret my pride and me, you know, being known by my family as a good child. I didn't want to tarnish that, or I didn't want them, I don't know why, I just, yeah, all I can say is, is just talk to someone, please, don't let it get to the point where your life is jeopardised, or your children's life is jeopardised if you have children, or just seek help, seek help, and do it in a discreet way. Because I know that, you know, um, at times when I 
when Bob had found out that I had spoken to people, um, tried to pull that up in the beginning, first trying to get help, yeah, that didn't go very well with him. So do it in a discreet way, but, you know, and pray, and I pray that you, I pray that there is no woman that has to deal with domestic violence, but in reality, it's not going to happen overnight and not for a long time, but I really do pray that you get help. Um, once you're out, even if you leave with nothing, like when I left, we sold a house, I basically cut ties and I walked away with nothing. Money didn't mean anything to me. Um, I had to be, I had to get out. It was my health. It was my life first. And I left with nothing, but I gained so much. I gained my courage. I gained my strength. I gained, I gained me back. Um, <laughs> all I can say is, is get help. Your life will be so much better. You won't, you won't get better overnight. You it takes a lot of time to heal. I'm still healing. I'm married and and I'm still healing. Um. But it takes time, but you will get better. Things will get better. Your life will be so much better. I admit sometimes, till recently, I have to turn over my shoulder and look back to make sure that, you know, someone's not following me because there were so many times where Bob had stalked me after I left. I had changed, I've changed my number. I've had to change my number so many times. At one point it was on a weekly basis. Um, just the stalking, everything, it just changes your life so drastically and only once you're actually out of the relationship and that toxic environment and it's been years, you look back and just think, you can just see all the signs that you missed. Don't let your love blind you and, you know, like I said, pray to God. If you're not a religious person, pray the universe or whoever, whichever you believe in. Um, just get out. Don't stay. Get out. Um, I hope I've said something that's of beneficial use to some women. I, I wanted to speak a lot more, but um, I feel like my emotions is getting the best of me. So I'm going to end this video. Assalamu alaikum and thanks for watching.